systems in uh, Honeybee. In the last video, we looked at HVAC systems and some custom outputs and then visualizing those, and which was down here. And in this one, I wanted to um, continue talking a little bit about this ideal air system. Um, we talked about before how it outputs uh, heating and cooling that is um, just the amount of heating or cooling needed to satisfy the thermostat set points. So I wanted to take a look at both those thermostat set points and the something called the coefficient of performance or COP. This essentially assumes a COP of one or a hundred percent efficiency. And the easiest way to approximate other systems uh, for, for our case right now, without going into a lot of detail modeling them, or really even understanding all the components of them, like fans and ducts and pipes and um, uh, heat recovery, heat rejection, all that stuff, is we can approximate these different systems using different COPs or coefficient of performance. So for example, a uh, heating system, a very popular heating system is a gas furnace, has a coefficient of performance anywhere between 70% and 94%, depending on the type of system that you have. So if we had a, um, we can simply take this number here, and I'm going to just use a item selector or list items. I'm going to take this list and I'm going to return the, um, zeroth item and that is going to give me the first one this here which is the heating and now i can divide by the cop 0 0.7 to get the actual energy use of that system so Notice that the original system or the 100% efficient system that Energy Plus is outputting, ideal load system, has uh, 9 kilowatt hours per square meter. But my um, really bad furnace is 12.87. Um, so it's using more, and that's because it's got a lot of waste. If I were to, on the other hand, use a heat pump. Uh, I could probably increase this to about 2.5 and notice it goes way, way, way down. So instead of nine, we're only using 3.6 kilowatt hours per square meter. Why that is, is the magic of heat pumps. And I will let you do that research on your own. It's going to take a while to explain it, but essentially we're moving heat. Uh, we're not making it. And that is helping with the efficiency. Um, and the same on the cooling end, we can do the same thing. And instead of the index of zero, the index of one will give us cooling. And um, uh, actually cooling heat pumps are more efficient than heating heat pumps. You can probably get efficiencies of four and a half or five, depending on the um, model or the efficiency that you choose. So instead of 13.8 kilowatt hours per square meter, we're now down at three kilowatt hours per square meter. So this is an important note about the, um, the ideal load system and in this class, how we're gonna deal with it to uh, create some much more um, representative systems uh, that are both all electric and are much more efficient. The next thing I wanted to talk about are the thermostats and that's way over here on the left-hand side. Remember that in the previous exercise, we had talked about how to set um, the HVAC system to have a very low heating set point and a high cooling set point so that you could approximate what happens if you really don't have an HVAC system. And um, that uh, you've already experimented with. This is the same set point all year long, all day long. And I want to show you a more nuanced way of creating a HVAC set point and I'm going to do that right here using the honeybee where are you maybe energy schedules 
we're going to do a fixed interval schedule. No, we're not. We're going to do a weekly schedule like that. And we're going to use this gene pool today schedule. And uh, this is a little widget. You'll see how this works in a second. And then we're going to use a native gene pool uh, component. Well, this is native in Grasshopper. And um, Honeybee has this kind of neat uh, thing here where you can set up this widget to um, make a gene pool that is um, sort of customized. So I'll show you how this works. So first there's templates. There's six built-in templates. Um, I'm going to use the first one, which is 9 o'clock to 5 p.m. And so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to set a low boundary of, say, 20 degrees Celsius and a high boundary of, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do, I'll do 15 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be a setback thermostat. Oh, whoops. I see what I did. Sorry, there. So template is zero, low boundary is 15, the upper boundary is 20. Um, and I can control here how many decimals I want on it. I'm not really that worried about that right now. And I'm going to make this run by putting true in here. And you see what this does is it automatically fills in or, or sort of completes this gene pool uh, with 15 degrees on the low end, 20 degrees on the high end, and it has that template from 9 to 5 p.m., so 9 to, um, the, including the hour of 4 p.m., so at 5 p.m. It, it ends. Now, I can also manually change this, so if I hit this to false, I could increase this uh, for later in the day if I wanted to, or earlier in the day, and extend it like that. I can also set, you know, moderate um, uh, uh, times if you want your HVAC thermostat to ramp up or ramp down. And for the sake of this class, I think this is a good uh, heating set point or setback thermostat. And then from here, I would um, attach this to the days when the building is being used. So say this is an office building and it's uh, people are generally there from nine o'clock to five o'clock, but some people might come early, some people might come late, so I give it an extra hour uh, or two on, on both sides. And then this is gonna be for people who are there working mainly on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and let's assume it's an architecture firm, so they're also working Saturdays, but they get Sundays off. So um, that is a good um, schedule. Now, for the days that they have off, there's no reason to have, um, have, um, uh, um, have the heating system on, or at least not on that high. So I'm going to now put this in the gene pool, and then I'm going to have the upper bounds be 15 degrees and lower bounds, and now it will force everything to 15 degrees. And I can plug, whoops, I can plug that right into Sunday, and maybe holidays will get off too. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little idea how this how this uh, widget works for the gene pool. And I can now just move this out of the way so you can see a little bit better what's going on here. That's going to there, and then this is going to Sunday and holiday. Um, for the rest of the schedule, I need a uh, this is for a summer design day and a winter design day. Uh, for the uh, summer design day, I would put in the um, sort of worst case scenario, which would be this. It doesn't really matter because it's not going to affect it. For the winter design, actually for both of these, the winter design day, I would put in the thermostat that's actually on. Uh, we're not worried about the design day when the thermostat is off. And then we need to put a name in. So I'm going to call this a 
heating setback thermostat. And then the type limits, if you hover over here, you can see there's different options for fractions, on off, temperature, activity level, and this is for temperature, like so. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the uh, cooling. And so I'm gonna copy all of these over like this. And I'm gonna to remember to change my schedule name, otherwise I'll get some errors. And now I want to change the gene pool for this guy to be between, let's call it a, a low of 28. We'll talk about this a little bit later when we talk about natural ventilation and a high of 32, whoops. Like so, I'm gonna press true. And now I have to, again, increase um, times when people are gonna be there late or early. And then for the uh, setback thermostat, when uh, no one is there, I'm gonna increase it always to 32, like that. And now I can disconnect the gene pool, just let it float here. And I should have um, my two schedules. So I'm gonna take these. And now um, when I go to the, when I um, have this set point here for the uh, program, the set point shouldn't be this no HVAC set point. So unplug that. Instead, I need to have the, oh, sorry, this should be there, but this should have this heating and this cooling set point. Like that, I'm going to change the name to a uh, mixed, I'm going to just call it MM, which is mixed mode, or maybe I'll just call it mixed mode. And we'll talk about mixed mode in the next um, video. I'm going to uh, run this model and come back and I'll show you what the, it looks like. So after running this, um, you'll see that the um, heating and cooling energy have both been reduced, the cooling energy dramatically so, and then I realized I made a mistake. Um, the way that I realized this is that if I look at the graphs of cooling and heating, you can see that the cooling barely comes on and the heating comes on throughout the winter when it's occupied. Well, the fact that the cooling barely comes on is interesting and sort of relates to this very low EUI that we're getting. But then I looked at the operative temperature in the room, which um, we looked at in a previous video that's this room comfort operative temperature. And I noticed that um, at almost um, all of the summer months, it's above 28 degrees Celsius, 30, 32. And a, one way of, of um, seeing this better is in this uh, statement here, I can put in a conditional statement. So uh, if A, oops, if A is greater than say 28 degrees Celsius, and it will parse it just to show me those dates or those times of the year. So we can see there's a huge number of hours that are greater than 28, and these occur when the building would be occupied, which is a little bit of a red flag. This is pretty warm. And so then I went and checked out my set point again and I realized that I reversed these two. So um, I have a 28 degrees Celsius setback and a 32 degrees Celsius uh, thermostat. They should be the opposite of that. So um, I'm going to pause the video and reset this and we'll see the difference that makes. By the way, I can um, control that a little bit with the gene pool 
uh, template. So instead of the zero template, which is the maximum value between 9 and 17, uh, number 1 is the minimum value between 9 and 17. So I change this to 1, and these all reverse. Of course, then I've got to adjust for my morning and evening, uh, and then I can rerun it. So now the run is complete, and notice that the uh, cooling has increased. It's doubled uh, from 0.2 to 0.4 kilowatt hours per square meter. And you can see that pattern in the graph here. Also, if we come up to the comfort graph, we can see that the hours above 28 degrees have been reduced, but they're not completely eliminated. And this is something I really wanted to point out which is we've been looking at operative temperature here. Um, and the, that operative temperature is a good indicator for human thermal comfort. But the ideal loads air system is air-based. And so it doesn't pick up on or it doesn't respond to the thermal mass or thermal lag in the space. If I plug in the air temperature only, you notice that there's just a few times when it's over 28 degrees, and presumably those occur on weekends because our thermostat, again, is set to, um, to take care of those times. And since it's an ideal load system, it has infinite capacity. It will always take care of them if the thermostat is set to do that, which it is now. Um, but again, the difference between the air temperature and the operative temperature um, is that the operative te temperature uh, takes into account the mean radiant temperature from all the surfaces that have been storing the heat and re-radiating it. And so this is a good indicator that although the, the room air might be cold or cool, the uh, room surfaces are warm and probably won't result in comfort. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at um, some increased ventilation measures that uh, could potentially take care of this situation. See you then.